Good evening, brothers and sisters. Um, I would like to to share with you the scripture of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 till 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 till 2. This is Paul writing. He's saying, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The book of Romans the, the epistle of Paul to the Romans is quite uh, a nice book to, 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 to read. And I encourage friends, people I know, say, go read Romans. In fact, uh, Martin Lloyd Jones spent about 15 years of his life preaching just on this book. Paul is talking more on righteousness, 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 justification, uh, love of God. He's talking and starting by the righteousness of God for the Jews and Gentile and goes about mankind, universal sinfulness, God's righteousness for justification, grace reigns through God's righteousness and God's demonstration of his righteousness to the Jew and the Gentiles. But when he comes to chapter 12, it looks like he's starting another part of the book. In fact, he's ending chapter 11 with a doxology, a praise. He's saying, For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Then he says, I appeal to you, therefore. So in light of what God has done, that we haven't been saved because of ourselves, but by faith, we have been saved by the mercies of God. It hasn't been our call. We were all condemned and we were all sinners, but God had mercy. And so to him be the glory. And in light of that, he's saying, now that we know how we have been saved, let us present our bodies. Why? Because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We please God and we offend. We also sin with our body. And Paul is saying that we need to present that instrument, which is our body, as a living sacrifice. And the, the word living there has quite a lot of weight. The living sacrifice. That reminds me of Abraham going with Isaac to present him to the Lord. A living sacrifice. When the Jews went to present their, their, their sacrifice, they didn't bring dead animals. They came with living sacrifice. And he's saying, we, let us present ourselves holy and acceptable to God. And presenting ourselves in that way will be a spiritual worship. But he continues in the second part, the second verse, saying, we shouldn't be conformed to this world. And that verse really, that's one part. Do not be conformed to this world. This world has its own way of being and doing things, isn't it? The world tells us when someone does this to you, this is how you must retaliate. We need to pay eye to eye. But Paul is saying, do not be conformed to that. He is saying we, we, we need to, to be different from what the world is. Our mindset should be 
determined and reshaped by the knowledge of the gospel, by the power of the spirit, and by the concerns of the age to come, not the things now. What is waiting for us? In chapter 8, verse 5 till 9, perhaps let me read it for us. Paul is emphasizing, he is saying this, Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Our mind needs to be focused in that which is awaiting for us eternity. We could not conform to the things of this world, rather focus in what God is keeping for us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 18, and 1 John chapter 2 verse 17 again, the apostles and the writers are encouraging us not to walk according to this world, but according to God. Only if we renew our mind that we will please God. With a renewed mind, we, we find an increase in our faith. I just want to leave you with a couple things. Remember, our salvation didn't come from ourselves. It came from God. And because we remember that, let us refrain to do the things which can displease God. Let us refrain to do that which can continue separating us from God. And let, let us reiterate our faith to God. Paul is saying, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Only with a renewed mind that we will know what is acceptable to God. Otherwise, we will be following what the world is dictating us. We are going through corona and lockdown, coronavirus lockdown. So many things going on in, in the media. People saying various things. But we should be focusing in what the Lord is saying let us have that renewal of mind in christ jesus amen